illness, mental health struggles, and accidents can have terribly tragic consequences, as these celebrity parents who lost their kids at far too young an age know all too well. John Travolta and Kelly Preston's eldest son, Jet, died at the age of 16 while the family was vacationing at their home in the Bahamas in 2009. Rumors then swirled over the cause of Jet's death, due in part to accusations that his father played a role in the tragedy. John reportedly claimed that an ambulance driver threatened to allege that he was responsible for his own son's death if he didn't give him $25 million. Jet's official death certificate eventually concluded that he died after suffering a seizure. During a 2014 interview at a theater in London, John revealed just how devastating Jet's death was as he admitted, "'The truth is, I didn't know if I was going to make it. Life was no longer interesting to me, so it took a lot to get me better.'" Travolta added that it was his fellow Scientology congregants who ultimately helped him to recover emotionally. As he explained, "'I will forever be grateful to Scientology for supporting me for two years solid. I mean, Monday through Sunday. They didn't take a day off working through different angles of the techniques to get through grief and loss, and to make me feel that finally I could get through a day. And when John won an Emmy in 2016, he made sure to thank his late son. Kelly, Ella, Ben, and my little Jetty, uh, I, I love you all so much. Eric Clapton's song, Tears in Heaven, was tragically inspired by the shocking death of his four-year-old son, Connor, who fell from the 53rd floor of a New York City apartment building in 1991. The rock star later spoke to 60 Minutes about Connor's death, as he admitted that writing and playing music was ultimately his way of dealing with the tragedy. As he put it, "...the key thing that I learned about life from the death of my son was that we only have this moment, that we don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow doesn't exist, and anything can happen even before the sun sets." Eric also noted that he was surprised to discover that Tears in Heaven resonated with so many people, and he revealed shortly after Connor's death that the window he fell through was left open by cleaning staff. Nevertheless, he wasn't upset at the employee for the unfortunate accident. As he put it, "...it couldn't be anybody's fault, even the man who opened the window. I don't know if he knew there was a child in the apartment, so he can't be held to blame." Use guards on windows and safety gates on stairs. It's easy and it could prevent a terrible tragedy. Believe me, I know." In May 2015, future President Joe Biden's son, Beau, died at age 46 from brain cancer. And this wasn't the only time the future president lost a child, as his 13-month-old daughter, Naomi, and his first wife, Nelia, were killed in a car accident in 1972. Following Beau's death, the then-vice president released a statement on behalf of his grieving family that read, "...the entire Biden family is saddened beyond words. We know that Beau's spirit will live on in all of us, especially through his brave wife, Hallie, and two remarkable children, Natalie and Hunter." In 2012, Joe reflected on the deaths of Naomi and Nelia while speaking at a Memorial Day event hosted by the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors. As he put it, "...for the first time in my life, I understood how someone could consciously decide to commit suicide. Not because they were deranged, not because they were nuts, because they'd been to the top of the mountain and they just knew in their heart they'd never get there again. That it was never going to be that way ever again. That's how an awful lot of you feel." No parent should be predeceased by their son or daughter. I unfortunately have that experience, too." In July 2012, Sylvester Stallone's eldest son, Sage, died of a heart attack after battling heart disease for years. Sylvester shared a statement with TMZ that read, "...when a parent loses a child, there is no greater pain. Therefore, I am imploring people to respect my talented son's memory and feel compassion for his loving mother, Sasha. This agonizing loss will be felt for the rest of our lives. Sage was our first child and the center of our universe, and I am humbly begging for all to have my son's memory and soul left in peace." Sage's mother, Sasha Chotsk, speculated that a recent dental surgery may have contributed to her son's death. She shared that he had five teeth extracted and was on pain medication afterwards, and revealed to the New York Post, "...I told him not to do that. I've heard about people dying having multiple procedures done to your mouth. Do not have more than one tooth pulled." Like his father, Sage was also an actor and a director. Pierce Brosnan has been open about grieving the death of his daughter Charlotte. The former James Bond adopted her after marrying her mother Cassandra Harris and after her biological father died. Charlotte died of ovarian cancer at age 41 in 2013. Her mother lost her life to the same illness back in 1991. In 2013, Brosnan told People magazine, "...Charlotte fought her cancer with grace and humanity, courage and dignity. Our hearts are heavy with the loss of our beautiful dear girl. We pray for her and that the cure for this wretched disease will be close at hand soon." Seven years later, Brosnan took to Instagram to commemorate his late daughter and celebrate his granddaughter Marley May as he wrote, "...here's looking at you, kid, in remembrance of Charlotte and with happy birthday wishes for my darling Marley May." Brosnan has since become an advocate for cancer research in the wake of his wife and daughter's deaths. "...let's build that future 
where we hold our loved ones' hands, watch them grow old as it should be. Keanu Reeves began dating Jennifer Simon in 1998, but their relationship ended in tragedy. They had a daughter together, Ava Archer, but she arrived stillborn. Reeves faced more hardship when Simon was killed in a car accident in 2001. The accident reportedly occurred after she left a party hosted by musician Marilyn Manson as she drove herself back to the party while intoxicated and crashed into parked cars. Reeves opened up about dealing with tragedy during a 2006 interview with Parade. As he revealed, grief changes shape, but it never ends. People have a misconception that you can deal with it and say, it's gone and I'm better. They're wrong. When the people you love are gone, you're alone. The actor added, I miss being a part of their lives and then being a part of mine. I wonder what the present would be like if they were here, what we might have done together. I miss all the great things that will never be. Reeves has since found love again with artist Alexandra Grant. They were friends for years before things turned romantic and they went public with their relationship in 2019. Nick Cannon first broke the news of his five-month-old son Zen's devastating death during an episode of his talk show. He welcomed Zen with model Alyssa Scott in June 2021, before the boy died of brain cancer. Zen had been diagnosed with a high-grade glioma, a type of tumor that is difficult to treat because of how quickly it spreads. Cannon spoke with People magazine about noticing early signs of Zen's illness. As he revealed, it sounded like he had fluid in his lungs, like a sinus infection or something. The doctors didn't think it to be anything too concerning. Cannon also revealed that he and Scott went into action after receiving Zen's diagnosis. As he put it, we started asking, is there a way to prevent this? If not, how long do we have? The conversations quickly turned to, how can we give him the best life for the time that he does have? It could be weeks, it could be months, it could be years. They decided to make Zen's last moments special. As Cannon revealed, we focused on Disneyland, our favorite place. Every month, we would celebrate his birthday, just really seeing it as a victory every time he had a milestone that he was still here with us. Not only did we get to see the sunrise, but we got to see the sunset too. Alan Scott Newman, who went by his middle name, was the eldest child of Oscar-winning actor Paul Newman. He died on November 20th, 1978, of an accidental overdose of alcohol and Valium. His body was found in a Ramada Inn hotel in West Los Angeles. His father subsequently created the Scott Newman Foundation in his son's honor. The charity was designed to produce anti-drug abuse films. This foundation later became the Los Angeles-based Scott Newman Center, which provided resources on substance abuse education to the public until it closed in 2013. In the actor's memoir, Paul Newman, The Extraordinary Life of an Ordinary Man, he revealed that he knew about his son's drug use early on. As he put it, I kept thinking he was going through a phase of adolescent bad judgment. I never thought it would be fatal. He also thought his son may have felt pressure to keep up with his father's level of success, as he wondered, was there some way I might have told him he didn't have to be like me? That he didn't have to do macho things and could just be himself? Many are the times I have gotten down on my knees and asked for Scott's forgiveness. In 2006, model and actor Anna Nicole Smith's 20-year-old son, Daniel Smith, died from a mix of prescription drugs, mere days after Anna Nicole welcomed her first daughter, Danny Lynn Burkhead. Daniel was reportedly in the Bahamas to visit his mother and newborn sister at the time of his death. Anna Nicole and her then-partner Howard K. Stern were interviewed by Entertainment Tonight about the tragedy. Stern recalled the moment that they discovered that Daniel wasn't breathing. As he explained, I remember Anna saying, Howard, Howard, wake up. Daniel's not breathing. I went over and checked his neck, and I didn't feel anything, and we immediately called the nurse. Anna Nicole added, I don't understand why God took him and didn't take me. Less than a year after this devastating loss, Anna Nicole died herself from a similar combination of prescription drugs in her Hollywood, Florida hotel room. She was only 39. She was reportedly buried next to Daniel, with Stern revealing, Anna and Daniel were inseparable. Daniel was without question the most important person in Anna's life. From the time I met her, everything was for Daniel. Put your head up, Mikey. Why are you laughing? Huh? You're nervous? Stern and two of Anna Nicole's doctors were later charged with conspiring to furnish controlled substances and other felonies in relation to her death. Rapper and producer Dr. Dre has endured a number of tragic losses throughout his life. He's had to deal with the deaths of two brothers, as well as the passing of a son. On August 23, 2008, Andre Young Jr. died of an accidental overdose of morphine and heroin. The 20-year-old was reportedly found unresponsive by his mother, Janita Porter. 
Dr. Dre remained quiet about the tragedy at the time and instead had his publicist, Lori Earle, issue a statement which read, Dr. Dre is mourning the loss of his son, Andre Young Jr. Please respect his family's grief and privacy at this time. Dre later opened up about grieving the deaths of his loved ones in a 2020 interview with the British newspaper The Times, as he revealed, I've been actually asked to talk about it and go to therapy and what have you, but I'm not sure that's something I want to do because I don't think I should change it. Rapper Bobby Brown is still grieving the loss of his daughter, Bobby Christina Brown. She passed away on July 26, 2015, about six months after she was found unresponsive in a bathtub in her Georgia home. She'd been kept on life support following the incident and was later moved to a rehab facility. She spent her last days in hospice care. The medical examiner determined that she died of both drug use and drowning. The examiner's office shared a statement with People magazine that read, "...the underlying cause of death is the condition which starts the downhill course of events leading to death, and in this case, Case is the immersion associated with drug intoxication. The pneumonia and encephalopathy are more immediate causes which resulted from the immersion and drug intoxication. Bobby shared a statement of his own in which he said, Chrissy was and is an angel. I am completely numb at this time. My family must find a way to live with her in spirit and honor her memory. Our loss is unimaginable. I love you. Bobby Christina's untimely death eerily mirrored that of her mother, singer Whitney Houston, who died in 2012 after drowning in a bathtub. Reports revealed that drug use played a part in her death as well. Tragedy struck the Osmond family in 2010, when Marie Osmond's 18-year-old son, Michael Blossel, died by suicide after jumping from the eighth floor of his Los Angeles apartment building. Osmond then discussed the pain of losing her son during an interview on The Oprah Winfrey Show. She revealed that she talked to him about some of his hardships the day before his death. As she put it, "...it was the first time I heard him start to cry and say he was alone, that he had no friends, that he felt despair." Osmond also revealed that she had her own experiences with depression, so she may have understood her son's struggles. As she explained, when I had postpartum depression, I remember vividly driving that car and thinking how people would be better off without me. I really believe that. She also speculated that her son may not yet have had the tools to push through those thoughts because of his youth. As she noted, "...it was my age that told me, Marie, that's crazy. Children don't have that kind of age behind them. When they're 18, everything seems hopeless." In an interview with Katie Couric, Osmond revealed that she was able to find peace by telling her surviving children that she loves them at the end of every conversation. I had to choose to keep living for my other children." In a horrible twist of fate, Mary Tyler Moore's 24-year-old son, Richie Meeker, died on October 14, 1980, after accidentally shooting himself in the head with a shotgun. The death was especially eerie, as it happened about a month after the release of the Oscar-winning film Ordinary People, in which Moore played a mother grappling with the death of her son. Herbie J. Pilato, author of the book Mary, The Mary Tyler Moore Story, spoke with Fox News in 2019 about the insensitive rumors surrounding Meeker's death. As he explained, some talk of suicide, but Moore herself denied it. He apparently collected guns and accidentally shot himself the same year. It was incredibly tragic. Pilato also discussed what Meeker was like in his day-to-day -day life. As he revealed, a colleague of mine actually worked with Richie at CBS. It seemed like everything was fine in his life. He never seemed like an unhappy person, but the whole suicide aspect became an unfortunate fortunate rumor when he died. And this wasn't the only tragedy in Moore's life around this time. Just two years prior to Meeker's death, she lost her sister, Elizabeth Ann Moore. Her death was ruled a suicide. Bad things do happen to good people. Everybody gets something. Regina King has been open about how much her late son, Ian Alexander Jr., meant to her. For example, she once told People magazine, "...you don't know what unconditional love is. You may say you do, but if you don't have a child, you don't know what that is. When you experience it, it's the most fulfilling thing ever." Considering how close the mother and son were, it's safe to say that King was heartbroken when Alexander Jr. died by suicide in January 2022. She shared a statement with People following his passing that read, "...our family is devastated at the deepest level by the loss of Ian." He is such a bright light who cared so deeply about the happiness of others. Our family asks for respectful consideration during this private time." Alexander had opened up about some of his struggles shortly before his passing. In January 2022, he tweeted, "...I don't think Instagram is healthy for me. The talented young man worked as a DJ, and he was also a musician who had released new music just weeks before his death. He also made it clear just how much he valued his relationship with his mother. In 2021, he took to Instagram to share a lengthy message for her birthday that read in part, to be all that you are while always having the time to be there, love and support me unconditionally is truly remarkable. <laughs> She's just a super mom, really. 
Actor Mia Farrow is the mother of 14 children. She adopted 10 of them and had four biologically. Sadly, though, three of them are no longer living. In 2012, she took to social media to detail the causes of her children's deaths, as she wanted to put an end to the speculation that surfaced following HBO's Allen vs. Farrow documentary. The documentary focused on claims of sexual abuse and grooming surrounding Farrow's ex, filmmaker and comedian Woody Allen. Farrow's Twitter statement read in part, My beloved daughter Tam passed away at 17 from an accidental prescription overdose related to the agonizing migraine she suffered and her heart ailment. My daughter Lark was an extraordinary woman, a wonderful daughter, sister, partner, and mother to her own children. She died at 35 from complications of HIV AIDS, which she contracted from a previous partner. My courageous son Thaddeus was 29 and happily living with his partner. We were all anticipating a wedding, but when the relationship abruptly ended, he took his own life. Fellow Twitter users comforted Pharaoh after she shared the heartbreaking message, with one responding, So many losses, but also so much joy. You show up for life unconditionally. You are extraordinary, Miss Pharaoh. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 or by calling 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.